Hi guys, today we will be exploring how different skin types age differently. Have you ever heard that oily skin ages a lot better than dry skin? Well, there might be some science behind it. Now, I like to think that there are four skin types. Of course, there are some variations and combinations of all, but the main skin types are dry skin, oily skin, normal skin, and sensitive skin. However, for this video, I will be treating sensitive skin and dry skin as one, as usually they come together like sensitive skin types usually always have dry skin. So to simplify things, that's what we're going to be doing. So first of all, starting with dry skin. Dry skin tends to be genetically a lot more thinner. Also, the pores are a lot smaller and it appears a lot more smoother compared to oily skin. Also, dry skin people tend to have prettier looking skin. However, one of the drawbacks of having dry skin is that you will develop wrinkles and fine lines or that crepey look a lot faster down the line compared to someone with oily skin. Oily skin, on the other hand, doesn't look as pretty and also the skin is a lot more thicker as well as the pores being larger and the skin appearing less smooth so a little bit more rough. However, one of the positives is that as I'm sure we all know, oily skin people tend to develop much less wrinkles and this is mainly due because of the thickness of the skin. Now, oily skin tends to be the thickest where most of the oil glands are present. So for example, the T-zone. So right here on the forehead, of course, the nose, the chin, as well as the cheekbones. So this is where our skin is going to be the thickest. Hence, for example, the horizontal forehead line, they won't be as visible as someone with dry skin. So actually, when the skin is thicker, those cells that can bind the skin are a lot more tightly packed and condensed together. Whereas dry skin or thin skin is a lot more looser. Therefore, in that way, oily skin also seems and appears a lot more tighter. Now, this thickness of the skin is determined by two simple things, your DNA and like your inheritance so for your mom and your dad and also your race. So you not only will you have to look at your mom and your dad to see how thick their skin is and also it's a very good telltale sound and how you will age but also on top of that depending on your race. So I'm sure we all know black doesn't crack. That is because black skin, Mediterraneans, Latinos, I'm Italian by the way so Mediterranean, hey! But basically we have thicker skin compared to the more Nordic ethnicities. So for example the British, the really light skin types. So due to that thickness, we are genetically predisposed to have less wrinkles. I say now we really drink it. Now, have you ever wondered why, independently of what race you are from, you get wrinkles, especially around the eyes and also on the forehead? That is because that is where the skin is the thinnest, both for dry skin types, for oily skin types, for normal skin types. By the way, if you have normal skin, you're basically in the middle, so treat it as you won't have as much wrinkles as a dry skin person. However, your skin is definitely not as strong and cannot handle as much as what an oily skin can. Now, a study done in 2015 actually showed that the presence or lack thereof oil glands under the eyes did not correlate with the formation of crow's feet or wrinkles under the eyes. Which brings me to my point. It is not down to how many oil glands or sebum you have on your skin, but it is all down to the thickness of your skin. So to my dry skin types who probably now might be watching this video and be like, okay, well sis, all I gotta do to fix this problem now is basically just slap tons of oil on my skin and I'll have oily skin and boom, you fall forever. And unfortunately, that is not the case. Because yes, oily skin does have more sebum and more oils and more moisture. And don't get me wrong, sebum has shown to keep the skin a lot more moisturized, hydrated, and just looking more youthful. That is why women, when they get into the menopause stage, they start to lose a lot of sebum production in their skin. And that furthermore increases the appearance of wrinkles. So definitely, yes, if you have dry skin, do moisturize, do apply oils. However, the main factor contributing to oily skin types aging less than dry skin skin is because we have thicker skin. So, is there anything that you can do to thicken your skin? Well, actually there is. It is a little bit invasive. It, it comes down into the plastic surgery umbrella, which I love, but I will talk about that later on in the video. Now, I actually want to talk about what is actually causing us to get these wrinkles and fine lines under the eyes. And that all goes down to loss of collagen and loss of elastin fibers in your skin, which in fact, this collagen, this elastin is responsible for keeping the structure of the skin. It is basically scaffolding for your skin. Without collagen and elastin, your skin just poof, 
goes down. So truly, the more you age, the less collagen and elastin your body will actually produce and have in the skin. Actually, from age 25, that is where our collagen production levels actually start to dip down. And from there on, it's just a slippery slope to death. But basically, what we can do to prevent as much as we can this loss of collagen all boils down to our skincare and to our lifestyle. What I actually like to think is that skincare is only 50% of the game. To play the full game and actually win the race and the battle against aging is actually to also consider lifestyle choices. So, this is why in this channel we talk about both. You cannot have just one. So truly, let's just repeat it very quickly. The In skincare, one of the main ingredients you have to focus on absolutely is vitamin A or better known as retinol. The king of anti-aging that is because it truly reverses the signs of aging. It actually increases the cell turnover rate. Basically all that means is that you will get fresher newer baby cells a lot more faster compared that if you weren't using retinol. So basically your skin is gonna appear a lot more fresher, glowier and also the fine lines are proven to decrease after six months of use. Collagen stimulators in the form of serum and also growth serum. Now, I want to say to this, specifically for me, I do use them and I do feel like they work. However, they are not proven quite yet. There is not enough evidence that they can bring on the table for me to just confirm and tell you guys that they work 100%. The only skincare ingredient that actually is proven to increase the thickness of the skin is once again Retin-A. So please do use peptides and growth serums. However, use them with a grain and a pinch of salt. Of course, there are a lot more other ingredients and a lot more things you should know, but if you want to know more, I have plenty of videos on that on my channel. Now, if we move on to the lifestyle part of this, we all know, first of all, smoking, quit it because it truly ages your skin like crazy. It actually gives you also smoker lines. It's basically just like the puckery. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely a no-no. On top of that, alcohol, we know it truly is the devil when it comes to aging because it actually dehydrates our skin. So dehydrated skin, once again, dry skin, basically also looks a lot more wrinkly and appears a lot more aged out. Now, if you don't want to quit drinking, which, okay, what you can do is actually also change your habits in your dining eating habits. So, for example, what you can do is basically cut out of your diet all those foods that actually increase the insulin levels in your skin and therefore the glycation, which is basically a process in your skin where actually it breaks down the collagen. So truly what you can do is cut out refined carbohydrates. So for example, white pasta, white bread, truly try switching to brown pasta, brown red. That is actually whole grain pasta, whole grain bed. So unrefined carbohydrates, which are a lot better and actually won't cause a spike of insulin in your digestive system and in your body because your body takes a lot longer to digest them. So therefore there won't be that spike in sugars. Also chocolate, Nutella's, all those desserts, they're definitely quite bad for you because not only they do increase glycation levels, but on top of that, it has proven to actually cut down and really just grind on the telomeres in your DNA. And if you didn't know, the telomere is basically the ending part of your DNA strand. And with each replication of the cell, basically that telomere on its own naturally just degrades a little bit more. So that is actually what it causes us to age, that degradation of telomere of DNA in the skin. However, the more sugars you eat, the faster that telomere will degrade and therefore the faster your skin will actually age your body in general. And lastly, before I move on to the plastic surgery portion of the video, dairy. You guys, I'm sure we all know dairy not only causes us to have a lot more acne in the skin, but also is once again increases inflammation and glycation rates in your skin, therefore truly makes you age a lot faster. What you can do, a simple easy fix that I have implemented and trust me, I don't regret it at all and I don't miss dairy at all, is actually replacing them with vegan options. So for example, almond milk, oatmeal milk, and soy yogurt. Truly trust me, they all taste the exact same and you won't miss dairy at all in your diet. Okay guys, now it's time to move on to the plastic surgery part of this video. For any one of you who maybe just does not want to only stick to using skincare and maybe change their eating habits, but want to take it the step further. Well, plastic surgery comes in handy. More invasive treatments that you can do is first of all dermal fillers or hyaluronic acid based fillers. Now when you inject this hyaluronic acid, 
acid into your skin, what it does is it basically links and binds with your skin and therefore actually meshes and gives you more volume. So for example, if you were to inject your cheekbones, not only were your cheekbones become bigger, but on top of that, there would be an immediate stimulation of collagen right where you inject it. So that could also lead to skin improvements. And also this increase in volume will basically tighten your skin because as I'm sure we all know, with age, we actually tend to lose volume and fat and muscle and bone structure. So by adding back up that volume in your skin, you're actually going to tighten the skin and make it less saggy. And of course, on top of that, that collagen stimulation will also improve the appearance of phalans and wrinkles. The second thing you could do is fractional resurfacing lasers. What they do is they basically stimulate, once again, collagen and promote that collagen stimulation in the skin. Another version of this is, for example, ultrasound or radio frequency. Once again, ultrasound, basically all it does is it basically penetrates into the deepest layer of your skin, which is actually called the hypodermis, and actually it will heat up that skin and therefore the skin will shrivel up and tighten. If you think of your skin, I'm gonna give you a weird analogy here, but if you think of your skin kind of like bacon, when bacon is heated up, what it does is it basically just shrivels up and therefore it tightens. So truly actually the hypodermis is truly that layer that plastic surgeons actually have to take up and lift to do facelifts. By tackling that hypodermis, you really get a lot of lift and a lot of tightening, so it's really good. And results for this treatment usually last from one to three years, depending on each person, so truly they are considered to be very long-lasting. And now lastly, before I end this video, I want to say, yes, if you do want to know what you will look like once you get older and age a lot more, then definitely do look at your mom and your dad, because a lot of aging is due to genetics, so nature. However, I also want to say it is also due to nurture, so the lifestyle choices and the way we decide to live our life, as I already said and mentioned before. So truly, one thing I will say is nurture does always trump nature, so don't get discouraged if you have dry skin, if you have thin skin, and you feel like you're aging a bit too fast. Do not get discouraged. Do get your skin routine down to the T. Do as well make the good and right lifestyle choices as well as maybe going the step further and being a little bit crazy like I am and maybe consider some plastic surgery. But anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video so much. And if you're new here and you want to learn more of how to prevent this aging and get your nurturing part so much better and down to the T, then this is their channel for you. What you should do is actually subscribe to the bell icon so you don't miss any of my uploads because once again, this channel is all about this, all about preventing this aging, this disgusting curse that God gave upon the human humanity and human race along with racism and just all judgment and just everything that is bad in this human. Why did it get so deep? I did not need to do that. But anyway, if you also want to see a little bit more of me and just behind the scenes of my life in general, what you should do is actually follow me on my Instagram right here because I keep the same energy as well. As if you maybe have any issues at all with your skin that you want me to help you out with or issues in general with aging or whatever, girl, don't you hesitate to DM me. I would love to help you out. But anyways, to my randoms who are still watching, you know what time of the video is now. It's time for the Italian word of the video. And since this video was all about aging and having dry skin or versus oily skin and all skin types in general, then the Italian word of the video is actually going to be asciutto or slash secco, which is dry in English. Now, if we are speaking specifically of dry skin types, then the Italian word you should use is secco pelle, which is skin sick. However, if you were to speak of like, for example, the, the weather is dry or something you're touching is dry, then you would say asciutto. I know, don't ask me why Italian is complicated. Us Italians, we just really like to complicate our lives. I have no idea. But anyways, ma'am, hello, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? No, 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 you're not gonna click out of this video just yet. I know it's ending, but what you should do is watch one of these two right here. YouTube does not know what you want. What you want is these two. They're just gonna be as entertaining, as informative, or whatever this video was for you but while you're doing that remember to be random and always be random now please do click one of these two videos or i will get a syringe and basically <laughs> suck out dry all the oil from your skin and you'll shrivel up like a prune but please click